You're watching Women of Strength TV for the purpose-driven woman who has a yearning deep in her soul to serve the world. Presented to you by Ange Wilcock, creator of Evolutionary Model of Well-Being, Mindfulness-Based Storytelling, and The Raw Woman Project, a businesswoman on a mission for every human on the earth to feel enough. Welcome to another episode of Woman is Strength podcast and TV and I've got another incredible guest today and I've got the beautiful Melanie Benayat and I was just asking Melanie about pronunciation of names because um, you know living in different countries we, we all pronounce things differently so it's really good to just find that out because I pronounced it wrong at the very beginning so welcome Melanie. Thank you. It's good to be here. Cool. And it's great to have you here. Now, I'm just going to do, as I always do, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about Melanie and read her bio. Um, and she's quite an accomplished lady. So, and I never read, I don't really do a lot of research around um, my incredible women before I interview them because otherwise some of my not good enough stuff comes up. So it's like, no, just be me. So, so this is Melanie. So, Melanie is a professional artist with a product line called the Millie Girl Collection. She's also an author of award-winning book, Stretch Your Brave, Hack Your Story, Break Through Chronic Disease Through Storytelling. I'd be really interested to hear yeah, some more about that. I'm, I'm sure she'll tell us more in, in, around her journey. And she's a board-certified holistic health coach. But she's also the founder of Wing Space Coworking, a co-working space for independent workers, in Arizona. So welcome Melanie. I gosh, you <laughs> it sounds like you've got an amazing story to tell us. So you know I'd really love for you to share with us your journey of becoming that woman of strength and doing all these phenomenal things that you've done. Well thank you. I'm I'm excited to be here and I'm excited to share my journey with others if it can help others in any way. I'm all for that, for women, empowering women, and helping them step into their power. Yeah. Great. Cool. So, uh, so what do you want to know? <laughs> so where, where did your journey begin? I mean, it sounds like, you know, if, you, if we look at your book, there's obviously a big story, what I would assume, I'm making assumptions now, but I would assume that there's some, you know, a journey or a story behind the book. Um, the storytelling, you know, around this, this chronic illness. So maybe that's that's a place to start because I know a lot of women um, suffer from things like adrenal fatigue, fibromyalgia, or, or lots of autoimmune diseases because we're constantly being superwoman, aren't we? You know, we're, we're wanting to be everything to everyone, and when we're purpose driven, we also got a key message that we want to get out to the world. And so we're not only trying to run a home and a family, we're trying to establish a business or a different lifestyle for ourselves. And I don't know if that's your story, but seems to be a lot of purpose-driven women's stories. It's, so, it I think yes. it's, very common. it's a very common theme uh, among all of us. And um, I have owned businesses uh, for a lot of years now. It started when I was 17. And that entrepreneurial thing um, has been in me for a very long time. It started even much younger than that. I was always very interested in making things and selling things and seeing what people are interested in. Um, so I started at a young age having a lot of different ideas that I wanted to put out into the world. Um, and you know that saying where, um, you know, the less you know, the better. I think there's so much to that because I was too young to realize that what I was doing was actually hard for a lot of people. Mm. I just didn't no, I just thought, well, if I make this thing over here and I put it up for sale over here, people will buy it and I just continue that cycle, right? Yeah. So I started out without all those barriers of, um, you know, I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough. I just did it. And it wasn't until I got into some relationships and, and I got into my first marriage and then I married an entrepreneurial 
person who, a man who um, had his own ideas and we kind of started clashing. And for the first time I started feeling like, do I not know what I'm doing? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and the, the uh, beliefs um, started creeping in and then that marriage didn't last very long. <laughs> that lasted for four years. And I got into a second marriage a couple years later and we were married for 15 years and, um, and we started a business together. We actually ended up having two different businesses together. And once again, I had this, this clashing between us. I, I felt that things, you know, could go better if we did this in the business and he would be, you know, he would kind of, um, talk louder than me and kind of get his way, so to speak. Right. And I started kind of making myself smaller and saying, okay, we'll give things a try his way. And that didn't always work out. And I said, well, so let's try it this way. And he wasn't willing to do that. And so I started finding myself doubting my intelligence doubting my abilities and 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 i'm not saying this to put men down it just happened to be these relationships that i was attracting into my life that were not good fits for me um i'm i happen to be in a marriage now that is absolutely wonderful um and it's very supportive both ways and i chose not to go into business with him <laughs> <laughs> I kind of learned my lesson that, that yeah. way that, you know, maybe I should just do my own thing again. And, um, so, you know, I, when you ask, when did my journey begin of, um, kind of recovering from that, those, uh, those relationships and re and regaining my own confidence again, because after 15 years of being in business in this second marriage, um, I was pretty beaten down and uh, I, I, in fact, after we got divorced, we went through, I, there's a story behind this. I write a little bit about it in my book, but um, the story is I, I ended up going through criminal court and divorce court at the same time. Um, I was uh, uh, arrested for assault and in in my relationship and when i tell the story of what what i was arrested for i just get nothing but laughs because yeah. or the big rolling eyes because um i threw guacamole on him right and, <laughs> and that was considered assault wow and i was actually arrested um and then he began this big smear campaign um we did business with a lot of people in our city and it wasn't a big city. It was this kind of a small town. And, um, once your reputation starts, you know, being put in question that, that really hurt me and it hurt, hurt my reputation. Um, and I got really, really depressed and non-functioning. Um, and I, I wasn't sure what I was, I actually, became homeless for a while. Uh, we had lost the business. We had a, a small farm as well. Um, I had a fit, we had a fishing resort in the Cascade Mountains of Oregon. Um, so I lost that in the divorce. Um, and then he got the house and he got the kids and he, and I ended up with nothing. And um, so I had a, a long way to climb up after yeah having all of this to then homeless. Um, so it was then I was a year in and out of court. And uh, I, after the divorce was over, I knew I was going to have to spend some time healing that trauma that just took place. Um, and, you know, losing my kids over this was, uh, that was huge. That was, um, I didn't know that I could recover from it. Mm. Uh, so I ended up leaving the country for a little while for six months. I went down to Mexico. I rented myself a casita 
And being the artist that I am, um, between art, going to an art therapist and then doing some of my own art to, to do a lot of healing um, and exploring like my life. Like, how did I end up here? How did I attract the people that I attracted into my life? Why? What happened in my relationships that, um, that influenced the choices that I made in life? Mm. Um, and so there was a lot of exploring in, in my artwork uh, regarding that. And um, while I was there, I tried to figure out what kind of eggs I like to, you know, that was my choice. What kind of things do I like to do j just in my own spare time? Do I, do I want to go dancing? Do I, do I want to walk into a restaurant and see if I can join a single woman who's dining by herself? And do I want to, you know, what do I want to do? Because my whole life up to that point, like you were just describing was for everybody else. It was for helping my husband run the business his way. It was for taking care of our four kids. It was for running the farm. It was for everybody else. And there was no time left over for me. It's so, so, it's so common as well, isn't it? You know, it's, it's, it's something that we do as women. And then when we start digging deep and looking at those limiting beliefs, because even when we're in the role that we are, I mean, we, we're both in roles where we're supporting and empowering women. But I think the key message that probably we're both saying is that you might be in that industry and you're not a fraud because what you're doing is you're continually digging deep and finding out, so why am I attracting this? Why am I attracting that? Why am I thinking this? Why am I thinking that? And I think that's what I love about, you know, you sharing these stories and obviously your book sharing your story too. It's because women connect to that because they're like, oh, okay, so I'm not a fraud. I might be in this industry. I might be a coach. I might be a healer or whatever, but mm -hmm. you're still human. Aren't you? you know, we're still human and we still will attract certain types of people into our lives because we haven't done that inner work yet that we need to do so yeah so sorry to interrupt your story but it's just no, no, no. You know, it's, it's just that message for women to say do you know what really it doesn't matter where you're at it's perfect the place where you're at right now is perfect because if there's something in you know this message that melanie's sharing it's it's connecting with you and it's just your soul speaking to you and we're just connecting with you too so so melanie yeah, carry on because it sounds like the art therapy was very therapeutic and enlightening for you it was it was um for me it was very good i mean uh, you know during my divorce i didn't want to i couldn't pick up a, a paintbrush i you know i tried and it was very difficult the emotional trauma that took place where my entire life was you know flipped upside down it's like i the last thing i wanted to do was pick up a paintbrush but that was the very thing that a friend of mine suggested she said no no you need to go to an art therapist and it was very interesting because it was kind of like going back to kindergarten she she sat me in a in a little tiny chair like for a little kid at yeah. like a kindergarten gardener's table too at that level so that i could get back down to just the basics of what happened to me in my life and um, so, you know, story is, is a, a big thing for me. Mm. Um, I, when I came back from Mexico and I decided to move to Arizona, this is where I'm from. And so I thought being close to family and friends again would be healthy for me. And I made the move. Um, and I found myself in a small, another small town, Prescott, Arizona. And it's, it's, um, it was a good pace for me, kind of like going back in time. Uh, and I needed that. I needed slow. Um, I needed to discover some new friends. What kind of friends do I want to invite in my life now? Um, how do I want to surround myself with good people? So, um, I, and then, you know, after I'd moved here, I'd met, I'd met my current husband six months later and we dated for a few years um and then we ended up getting married and i i once again wanted to do my own thing my own business um so 
I decided to take my artwork and turn it into a product line, the artwork that I created in Mexico. Because I had this feeling that there would be other women mm. who could resonate with it and want, uh, you know, to, I, I guess hopefully my hope was to spark something and then to do more exploring of their own stories. Um, so I, I invested uh, money into creating this product line but then the fear started coming up again. Like I started scheduling myself to go to art galleries and to do art festival shows and this kind of stuff. And, and I thought, oh my God, I'm going to be putting this very personal stuff out into the world. How can I do that? I mean, people are gonna be asking me questions about this stuff. <laughs> Am I prepared to, to talk about it and tell people? Um, uh, so I actually held a, um, an art show, a private art show and invited, um, a, a lot of people to the show and it wasn't to sell work. It was to face, uh, what I called, um, the naysayer. The, yeah. I, I, I wanted someone, I was like praying for someone to show up to this show to, cut my work down to say something terrible about my work or to just just nitpick it yeah. terribly. I was like, come on, bring it on. <laughs> I want to know how I'm going to survive this. Like how will I handle it in a mature way? Right? So ton, lots of people start coming into the show and they're looking at the artwork and they're reading the stories that I have posted next to them. And, and it was a beautiful venue, beautiful show. And then in walks this man that was like six foot four. And I, mind you, I'm four foot 11 and a half, right? So I'm, <laughs> I'm like, he was towering. You know, right? And he, in he walked and he had a big booming voice. And I just knew, I knew like, I bet that's going to be the person. And he was, and he had a crowd of people around him. And he started saying, her work is so, I don't know, elementary, isn't it? Like, and he, this, just the thing he was saying about my work. I'm like, yes, this is my opportunity to face this fear that I have of people not liking my work. Cause I, not everyone's going to like my work, Yeah, but I can't let it, I can't let it stop me from get, getting my work out there. I can't let it scare me into, you know, curling up into fetal position and saying, I'm not good enough to be out there. Mm. So I went up to him and I reached out and I said, hi, I'm Melanie. I'm the artist and you are. And he, you know, looked down at me and he shakes my hand and, you know, he's just like, oh, um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting work. And I just decided to have a conversation, not about my work, but about him. And I just wanted to get to know him. And I kind of took over and let him know that his words were not going to hurt me. Yeah. And, um, and it, it ended up being exactly what I needed to then look and say, I can handle this. I can put my work out there and it's not going to kill me when someone doesn't like my work. Yeah. So that was kind of one of those tools that I used to, um, to know that I was going to be okay. It's perfect. Cause it's, and people, you know, it, it's that whole, isn't it? You know, fear around false evidence of appearing real because actually when you step into it, it's not. And, and it is, I mean, I, I do that too. I mean, sometimes people think I'm crazy, but I step into that place of, right, I need to put myself out there. Be incredibly vulnerable because I want to see, yeah, like you said, the naysayers, see what they're saying. <laughs> it's like, and when they do, all you can do is bless them and love them and go, do you know what? I love that you have a view and you're, you know, you're strong in your view and I have my view and neither of us are right and neither of us are wrong. It, it's just, we're not going to appeal to every person on the earth. Or not. But the key not. thing is the people that we do are the people that we support and help and, and walk alongside. And that's, that's the most important thing, isn't it? It is. It is. 
So, I, you know, there were lessons to learn along the way with that. Um, and then my health took a turn. Um, and it was during the, the 2008 recession that happened here. Um, and a lot of people were suddenly not buying a whole lot of fine art, which really impacted um, my business. And I mean, I was still selling well at the shows, but I could tell that a lot of other people were starting to really suffer and I knew it was going to hit me soon too. So, uh, but the stress of it all triggered um, an autoimmune uh, response in me. And uh, the stress was, was very high at the time. And um, rheumatoid arthritis runs in my family. And suddenly uh, I started having um, all sorts of problems with my hands and my feet and my arms and the joints and everything was swelling. And it got to the point where I couldn't close my hands all the way. It would just literally just stop Gosh. right there. And um, so I couldn't paint anymore. And I thought, well, oh my gosh, I'm gonna to have to change careers. <laughs> this is terrible. Uh, and I decided what I wanted to do was go back to school and learn how to reverse these symptoms, first of all, so I could get my hands and feet back. Um, and I couldn't lift my arms up past here um, either. So this was a problem. I mean, I was having a major physical problem. Yeah. So, uh, I went back to school and I um, for 18 months and got my holistic health certification, learned how to reverse everything and did and got full use of my hands back. But then I was like, well, maybe I'll try health coaching as an actual business and started working with clients um, and having to learn how to market to a completely different audience and in a different way. So I had to learn about technology, how to do webinars, how to, you know, write emails and um, how to do a blog. You know, this was back in 2010. So, um, you know, I was having to, to learn some new skills and I was once again outside of my comfort zone and trying to figure out, okay, how do I do this and how do I actually coach someone? Um, I have, um, it, it was one thing to process when someone would come into my booth at an art show and they would fall in love with a piece and they would say, I want that painting that I know exactly where that's gonna go in my house or my business. And you know, they would hand me their credit card and I'm like, awesome, yeah. you know. And then off they would go, right? right? Um, but it was different to suddenly work as a coach and go, okay, now how do I, how do I convert someone from, from you know, a non-client to a paying client? Um, and, and it was different for me. I don't, I, you know, I, I'm not a, a person who can sell and convince someone into yeah. something, right? That's not mm -hmm. me. That's not what I wanted to do. I want, didn't want to get into slimy selling. Um, or pressure. I wanted someone to decide. I want to work with you um, and as, as my health coach. Um, so learning that process of how do I convince someone to do this. Um, and so I had to learn all these new skills again and showing up for webinars and leading a webinar was once again, oh my gosh, I I don't know how to do this. How do I do this authentically and yeah. not try and put on some fake face um, and, and be someone that I'm not? Because I, I would watch other people's webinars and go, oh my gosh, they have it so together, you know? And <laughs> their presentation is just so polished. Yeah. And I'm just not that. So um, I had a lot, of, once again, you know, this comes up, it's a cycle. Every time we stretch ourselves outside that comfort zone and try something new, it's like we have to go through it again. Yeah. And when we do it, it's like, I mean, like I was saying to you off air, that's how the Woman of Strength podcast and TV and Raw Woman Project came about because it was very much, that was, I was in a similar space myself and it was like, I want to do a podcast, I want to do a TV station and I was looking at 
other people out there, people that I was following, people that were my mentors. I'm thinking, it's going to take me years to be like that. How am I going to be like that person? And then one day it just comes to you. It's like the universe, you know, just throws you this and just goes, you, you are you and just be you. And that was it. I just said, like, okay, I'm just going to do this. And I flick some information in one of the Facebook groups that I belong to. And I had all these people going, I'd love to be interviewed. I'd love to be interviewed. And yeah, and it is. And, and so we do get stuck in having to learn those new skills. And back in 2010, you know, webinars and doing what you were doing then is much harder than it is today. Because today everything's automated. It's pretty easy. Facebook Live is just incredible because, you know, it's there's so many different tools out there and people are used to it. But, yeah, like you said, all those limiting beliefs come up again and it puts stress on the body. One of the questions I wanted to ask you um, is, so you did your um, holistic health uh, qualification. So when you were doing that, because I, I don't know how you work, but I work with the mind, body, emotion. And so when you were talking about, you know, your arthritis in your hands and your, and your joints and the, what come into to me straight away was, wow, your artistic gifts were being restricted. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because there was an emotional um, a cellular level running through you that was restricting this. You know, you couldn't do that. You know, the things that you needed to do to be yourself for your art. So did was that something that came up when you were learning more about yourself and holistic medicine and, and that sort of mind, body, emotion connection? Um, yeah. I mean, it, uh, I did go through a period of depression for a while, too, when when that ability was um basically restricted taken away uh, however you want to view it yeah um, yeah it, it was uh, who am i now because i art was something that i had done for at that point uh 30 years right. you know that's how i made my living um i started out with graphic design and um you know so it was having to look at me and who am I if I can't do this? Yeah. You know? um, and once again, finding, trying to explore what value do I have to offer the world if it's not my art? And, um, and then, yeah, so there was a lot, a lot of junk that came back up again. Uh, I can't believe how many times, but you know what? The one thing I've learned is all of this, there is a lesson to be learned in, 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 in all of it. Yeah. And growth to be had in every challenge that you come up against. So now I'm to that point, thank goodness, that whenever something new like this comes up, um, I'm excited to learn what is this thing about now? Like, <laughs> why is this coming into my life? Um, and what do I get to learn and how do I get to grow? Whereas before it used to be just like, Oh my God. You know? Yeah. Again, why do I have to go through this again? Yeah. I'm just not learning. Am I, uh, but I have been. Yeah. And it's like, you've moved out. We do that. Don't we? We move out of that victim mode into creator mode. You know, it, it's about, so, cause I mean, I do something very, very similar when, when those sort of challenges come along, I go, Oh, what's the gift that I've been given today? Or what's the gift that's going on in my life right now? You know, how do, how do I unwrap this gift and see inside of it? And then it, it just feel I don't know it just feels delicious it just feels like wow this is such a gift and it's like you know it's like at Christmas isn't it you get something and it's like whoa what is it and yeah and you come out the other side with excitement well, I go in with excitement and I come out with excitement but greater knowledge and understanding of me and so yeah and it sounds like you you know you do something very similar and, and it's such a key message to people it's like the victim is always going, why me, why me, why me? But the creator's going, wow, what can I learn from this? You know, what can I take forward? How can I help myself? How can I help other people? And yeah, amazing. <laughs> yeah. Um, and okay, so now I, I spent five years working as a holistic health coach. Um, and then I had 
more ideas come my way of things, different things that I wanted to do. Um, one of the things I, I've been doing since 2010 as well is I work as a volunteer um, for uh, personal development workshops for parents who have children that are enrolled in a therapeutic boarding school. Right. So I work with the parents, not the teenagers. Um, and it is to give them that opportunity to look at the look at themselves and look at how they've been showing up in the world for their family and how their family ended up in the crisis that they're that they're currently in. Um, it's wonderful work, incredibly um, satisfying work, you know, to to help parents through this process. Uh, and so. Yeah, I continue to do that. I volunteer uh, three or four times a year um, for these three and four day workshops. And it continues to help me grow as a person as well, just learning, learning how to you know, help others in that way. But what that did and how we got into that is our own daughter, um, one of our daughters uh, was enrolled in the school. And so I, myself and my husband went through those workshops for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And there was, a, a, once again, more growth that happened. And it was through that process of working with clients, um, my health coaching clients, and these parents that gave me this idea for the Stretch Your Brave, Hack Your Story book, because um, that is exactly what we need to do, is to take a look mm -hmm. at what has happened in our lives, um, how, you know, how has that influenced me throughout my life, these things that have happened in my past, and how is it still influencing my decisions today? Um, and how is it impacting my health? How is it impacting my finances, my relationships, my spirituality, all those areas of my life? If I'm not willing to look at my story and be honest with myself, about my own choices, I, I'm not going to be able to make new choices, you sure. know, mm. not knowing those things first. Um, so it was very inspirational um, to me and, and, and instrumental in, in writing this book. Um, and it includes uh, a lot of the artwork that I created when I was in Mexico. So, um, and the stories behind each of those pieces. And um, I, I just absolutely believe in storytelling yes. and using your stories in whatever it is that you're trying to do in your life, because that is what made you you. And that is why people are attracted to you. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. 100%. It's like, I love, that's what I love what I do. Cause it's like, you know, people telling their story, it touches other people's hearts. I mean, just through the woman of strength TV and podcast, I've had some women contact me and go, wow, listening to that particular podcast for that woman sharing her story saved my life or it made me look at my life differently. I've been able to move away from a toxic relationship or I've been able to be a better parent you know, I've been able to start propelling my business forward because I've decided that those limiting beliefs don't serve me anymore. And it's like, and it's just the power of the story, just listening to the story. So incredible. Now we're coming to the end of our time now in, in, in this, um, in, yeah, this wonderful conversation. I love it. So could you, what's one gem that you could leave our viewers and listeners? You know, one, one thing that um, if they could just make one difference today, what, what would that be? What would you suggest? Mm, one thing different. I would say to, I, here's, it, it's such a common thing and such an important thing, but keeping a journal. Um, I think if you're, if you haven't kept a journal or it's something that you, you used to do and you've abandoned it, um, or maybe you've never done any kind of journaling, it is a very powerful tool, um, to really look at yourself. I mean, you can do a gratitude journal. Gratitude journals are, are wonderful too, but, um, I, the, the looking at your story, there's something called, um, uh, a genogram, 
Um, and it's, it's, it's not a, a journal, but it's, it's like a map that helps you look back at the, the traumas and the things that, that have happened in your life. Yeah. So maybe I'll switch that. Instead of journaling, look at how you can map out something in your life and how it's still influencing you today so that you can recognize those patterns of thinking, feeling, and behaving every time they, they get triggered when you're coming up against something hard, like showing up as yourself um, in something that you're trying to do. Uh, so so in, it, just recognize it. You can yeah. Google it. You can Google Genogram and pull up the map and, and write it out and just recognize those patterns that are happening in your life. Great. That's Thank you. Because it, it is, that's so valuable and very, very powerful. I totally agree with you. I mean, it's something that I've done um, and, and journaling it as well. I mean, it doesn't matter. We can do the two things because journaling, people don't realize the power in journaling. And it's also, don't just journal for a couple of minutes because that comes from here and you keep journaling and keep, then it comes from the heart and soul and you just, it just keeps flowing and flowing and flowing. So thank you for that. That's great. So genograms and journaling. So we've got two, two gems. And like Melanie said, just Google it, you know, because you'll find out lots of things, simple tools, because we don't need complicated things to help ourselves. You know, it is life is simple and the mind is simple. The mind just needs simple things and it needs things to change it and understand it. So fantastic. And also, Melanie, what we'll do is we'll have all the links to your website, the incredible work that you do, and more importantly, the link to that book, um, because I'm sure there's some amazing gems in the book. So thank you so, so much for our conversation. It's been amazing. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for having me. Remain real, authentic, and whole. Be yourself and continue to follow your dreams. Thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you next time on Woman of Strength TV.